Watch all episodes of Ice Pilots. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. This week, Chuck takes on the Air Force. That's how you f-ing do it, boys. Hey, how are you? Joe gambles on the ultimate firefighting machine. Big bucks. And Mikey joins the Canadian Rangers. I never saw that in a million years. And braves the deathly cold high Arctic. Oh, it's not. I'm frozen stiff. Out of your hats, boy. You guys all set? Let's push on the wheels. One, two, three, go! It's man versus machine in the Buffalo hangar. Come on, you pussies. Come on, get the rocket! The crew needs to load up the Electra for a military contract. But first, they have to get it in place. All 57,000 pounds of it. Just gonna roll the airplane forward about five feet so we don't splash that thin air behind us from the load this thing. Five feet? Do we have five feet? You're putting the chalk in the back. We're going up hill here. Come on, there, Alec, get in here. Let's go, guys. Push. Hey. No. Suck a boat. It's going. Now we can't stop. <laughs> Finally, manpower trumps horsepower. Well, that's five feet now, guys, I'm sure of it. <laughs> now the real work begins. Just, just spin the front of that comet around and slide it down here. Cometic is basically um, a wooden sleigh that is towed behind uh, a skidoo. We got a job moving some cometics and skidoos for uh, the Canadian Rangers. The Rangers are a special reserve unit of the Canadian Forces, a unit made up largely of Inuit. They hail from over 100 communities scattered across the far north. So there are our eyes and ears on the ground throughout the Canadian Arctic. They patrol the land in the harshest conditions, protecting Canada's sovereignty. And Mikey's been invited to join them on a training patrol in remote Cambridge Bay. You no know, Canadian Forces have been wonderful to us. I got to uh, go last year with them paratrooping. Uh, I got to go flying in an F-18. You no, know, this is just taking it to one more extreme. Go in the land, see what it's all about. But the world above the Arctic Circle is a far cry from the kind of north Mikey's used to. I've never been to the Eastern Arctic, you know, especially that high. I'm ahead of a foot. Electra heads for Cambridge Bay. And Mikey heads to gear up at the Rangers Yellowknife headquarters. If I gotta get fitted out with the right gear, this is the coldest time of year, so we gotta make sure we're dressed properly. Sure, let's try some stuff on? Yeah. You wanna try that one on there? Yeah, for sure. What, uh, what temperatures? I guess this is gonna be the coldest part of the year, right? Cam Bay is. It's not gonna be pleasant, no. <laughs> How they fit? You're gonna, you're gonna be able to sit down in the corner. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's got lots of room in this one. Pitch motion. They're nice. Nice. I like these boots. What do you have for tips? Listen to the Rangers. Like these guys will keep you alive. I mean, they know what they're doing. They live this. This is their life. They do what they tell you. Yeah. Very, uh, very excited. Very happy to get the opportunity to. We'll have to see what you guys do for sure, firsthand. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, for everything. Yeah. But roughing it on the land at minus 50 
Mikey might not stay happy for very long. Back at the hangar. Rob, up with me a little 321. Up on me a little 321, you like that? Mr. Bravo, PD Buffalo's answering the call to help on another mission for an entirely different branch of the military. And Buffalo's answer. If I start moving it, I'm not going to stop. Is Chuck. Okay, what we got to do though, we should get that nose wheel a little bit of an angle to get this thing moving. But I'm not going to be able to move it straight on. See what we're getting at? The temperature's plunging into the minus 40s, and the Air Force needs to get out of the cold to work on their grounded CP-140 Aurora. When they got yelling if it was 40 some odd below when they had uh, cold weather problems with your airplane. We were trying to take off. It was the coldest morning so far of the year in Yelena. Prop number one started to leak, and we looked at number three. She was leaking as well. So uh, we needed some hangar space. Buffalo Joe's agreed to take them in so they can do a quick prop change. We do full engine changes in, in, in less than a day. So I'm thinking maybe two, three days max this uh, Aurora's going to be in here and they'll move on. Oh, yeah, I guess we'll let everything warm up before warm we start feeling around. Yeah. But Buffalo can't wait forever. We fly our planes every day. We're not in a maintenance facility. So at any point, they were under risk of, you know, being pulled out into the cold. For now, it's the Buffalo mechanics who have to work outside in the bitter cold. So you're not going to be able to bring anything in. Well, if we'll work outside, these are great. And Chuck, the least by the book guy at Buffalo. Want some AC power right now, or you want to have a cot? Will be the Air Force liaison. Yeah, relax. No one else seems to be coming around to help the brothers out, eh? <laughs> <laughs> they were a bunch of good guys, man. The Aurora aircraft and the Electra aircraft are very similar. And Chuck has a wealth of information on the Electra. And some of that can translate to the Aurora. See them two arms? Our initial game plan was to change number three prop completely. But first, the strict military guidelines require a test, and the results are about to reveal much bigger problems. As part of our normal maintenance procedure to remove a prop, you do a thing called a breakaway torque check. They need to make sure the propeller nut hasn't vibrated loose and caused damage to the gearbox inside the engine. The reading has to be at least 170 pounds of resistance from the gear. And it's not even close. Kurt. Well, I thought it was uh, not aligned properly, and it came off at a fraction of what it should have been. So you're looking about, uh, you're at 39 now. 39 <laughs> foot well, pounds. That's not Have good. a look here. Shit. By the books, that's an engine change. That's a, yeah, you want know, gearbox. It's gearbox change, but for us on the road, it's an engine change. It's a much bigger job and headache than Sergeant Clifford expected. There was an original plan. But, of course, stuff happens, and things don't always go according to plans. So we just want to know uh, how is that going to impact you guys. You don't know when your engines come up, right? Hopefully the next 24 hours right now. I think I'll just play by ear every day. OK. This setback will keep Buffalo's own crew stuck on the freezing ramp. Cold on the old hands, eh? Yeah. It's cold. Something's been rubbing on you. Chuck will have to play by the military's rules a lot longer than anyone expected. If the military had to make money, they'd be doomed. That's the difference between us and them. 850 kilometers north on Victoria Island, high above the Arctic Circle, the hamlet of Cambridge Bay is home to 1,500 people. And for today, it's home to Mikey. I've never been to Cambridge Bay before, and uh, it was like being on a whole other planet. Unbelievable, even for a northerner like myself. Around here, Mikey's actually considered a southerner. Everything was frozen, everything was frosty. You could see the frozen skidoos and frozen cars. 
being out just in the streets of Cambridge Bay, not even on the land. It was minus 47 out, and that's not including the wind chill. Once the wind chill takes its toll, uh, it's in the 50s, and it doesn't really matter after that. It's just, just cold. All right, check this out. That is the Arctic Ocean. Not very many places in the world do you get to see salt water frozen solid. Oh, there's a skidoo coming. This is awesome. I'm gonna get a good picture of this guy. <laughs> what I got myself into is something pretty extreme. Uh, we're gonna go uh, live in a tent out in the Arctic uh, and absolutely in the middle of nowhere. Personally, I'm nervous to be put into a situation to you know, go out and live in the most harshest climates in the world. I'm a little excited, I'm a little scared. Walking around Cambridge Bay was an eye opener and uh, maybe a little bit of a test run to see what I was getting myself into. Tomorrow, Mikey will find out that nothing could prepare him for the days ahead. In Cambridge Bay, Nunavut, the Canadian Rangers are about to head out on the land for training, along with their greenest trainee. I'm uh, a little nervous, but you can't think about it too much. You're going to psych yourself out. You might as well just get on that Suscanic and get out there. And while the Rangers' skidoos are warming up... Mikey, we need to get this frozen snowmobile going. This is the one, eh? Yep. Mikey is frozen solid. I'm used to just jumping on a skidoo, pulling the cord, fires up, and you go. No, no juice in the battery. Oh, no battery. Nothing. So you have to manually start. Up here, a stranded skidoo could mean life or death. You don't want to jerk it right away. You get some slack pull on it. Otherwise, if you jerk it right from the start, you'll break this. I grew up with snowmobiles my entire life, and they actually start them in a completely different way. Almost. Almost. You don't start. Pull it over a few times to kind of pre-warm up the engine with the ignition off, turn the ignition on, put the choke on, and just keep on pulling. Like most of his fellow rangers, Levi is Inuit, and he knows about survival up here. I've been a ranger for 16 years now, and a sergeant for eight years. These guys are the masters of this land, and for now, they're gonna teach me a thing or two on how to live in the north, even though I'm from the north. This is a whole new one. Yeah, I do have knowledge that I can pass, pass on to Mikey. A lot of knowledge. Keeping warm and Keeping your mind positive out here is the trick. If you start to lose interest and start getting cold and stop moving, that's when you start going, ah, I want to go home. The Inuit have survived in this unforgiving environment for thousands of years. Yes, I used this for building into the snow house. But even a couple of days will be a huge test for Mikey. You gotta wear your gloves in your gloves here. Uh, this is pretty cool. I'm uh, pretty excited. Uh, it's getting down to go time. <laughs> You'll be embedded into the patrol, trying to keep up with the Rangers and keep from freezing. So I'm just gonna put on my ninja gear here and get ready to go. But while Mikey suits up in his modern microfibers, the Rangers have their own proven technology. These are uh, dog, and these are seal pup with uh, fur trim for uh, wolf fur trim. And caribou cummings. If you want to stay warm, this is what you need. It's time to head out. And for city boy Mikey to face a patrol on the brutal landscape of the high Arctic.
on the Buffalo Airways ramp in Yellowknife. Buffalo's mechanics are exiled from the hangar, forced to work on the tarmac in minus 40. Chuck's figured out the best way to stay warm is by enlisting. Who are you working for? The military. Without asking, the guy was there. You gonna go or what? You gonna where? Anywhere. You gonna get some shit done today? Maybe he's uh, clairvoyant or something. But he was always around when we needed him. What I would do is I would put number one back together. Okay. Why not? But military protocol is a mystery to Chuck. He wants to get moving. That's the way I would do it in the explosion. That makes sense, right? We have technical manuals that detail every step that's needed to complete any particular job. Let me ask you this. If they're landed somewhere where they're being shot at, are they going to wait around for somebody to make a decision? I know I ain't. They're bound by their leaders, right? The Air Force won't start any of the major work until their new engine arrives later today. If it was a chuck engine change, it'd probably be in the hangar like one and a half days, but I'm not sure what program they're on. It's definitely not something that you want to rush. Uh, take our time, make sure we do it properly. But they won't even be able to get started if they can't get electricity to the plane systems. We tried the power car and that didn't work, right? Our relay is rather sensitive to a particular voltage. And the voltage coming out of the power unit in the hangar was of a different rating. That one's too much. So is this. Buffalo's power card puts out too much juice, enough to fry the circuits of the plane's multi-million dollar surveillance gear. All right, let's try and figure this out. But civilian Chuck is an expert at finding makeshift solutions. We're going to meter this and bring it down. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking A. Take that Phillips out, loosen the two on the back, slide it forward. Chuck and the avionics crew adjust the voltage levels from the cart. It slides out? Yeah. OK. Fire it up. There you go. Plug her in. Plug her in. If they've miscalculated and too much power floods into the plane, Chuck could destroy millions of dollars of sensitive equipment. Good to go. Now we have power. We can do a lot of stuff on our, on our aircraft. Uh, we can open the bomb bay, have access to our parts. It's awesome. And the Buffalo crew can get an idea of what this plane can do. One of the relatively recent additions to the uh, CP-140 is the MX-20 camera in the nose of the aircraft. A new camera that uses high magnification and gyro-stabilized infrared sensors to detect targets up to 20 kilometers away, day or night. And a simple miscalculation could have rendered it useless. Holy If you put 150 volts into this shit, you'd be here for a year. <laughs> With power flowing, Chuck wants to get started now. OK, like, see, we could have the engine off now. If you want it, we got to stand in there. It's up to you guys, like, what you want to do. But there's a new wrinkle. 24-hour delay. You got to be yeah. kidding. Yeah, plane ain't coming. The replacement engine won't be coming today after all. So Buffalo won't get their hangar back. And the temperature is dropping. We're going to spin around, because this is what Joe and I did last time. This is where our auction was right in his yard here. Buffalo Joe is on a shopping trip. We can get a sneak peek of the airplanes right through here. He's in sunny California to bid on some prime firefighting planes. 17, 22. If I can get those airplanes where we fight fire in Canada, it's a logical, sensible thing to do it. These used P-3 Orions could replace Joe's out-of-date DC-4 tankers. Joe bid on a few of them last year. In my first bid, the owners didn't approve it. They wanted more. So he's here to try again. Hey, Don? Yes, sir. Look at the riveting on this patch. And Joe's brought along some expert assistance for this inspection. Whatever's on the gun. Don Deo. He's the guru of P-3's Lockheed products, so 
He was consulting with me and helping me. Yeah, I'd say we're getting serious about this point in time to see, see what we can do with it. If they're ready to sell them and uh, Joe's ready to buy them, this would be a good, uh, good opportunity. All right. Well, I'm going to see where the, who the players at the poker game are and who's the dealer. But I can slip a couple aces extra in the deck. Hey, how are you? These planes are attracting a lot of attention, including a group all the way from Turkey. Do you know Bordo in Istanbul? So Joe's uh, trying to figure out just who the other players are here and, uh, and what their real interest level is to see uh, how it fits in with his plans to pick up one, two, or a bunch of airplanes. If I bid on these and I win them, I'll come back to you. Uh, it's always good to know who your competition is and what their interests are. So that's what I think he's, uh, he's doing now. <laughs> well, I knew there from other countries there'd be other bidders. They're very well-known airplanes with, uh, coming from a very well-known company. Well, I, I knew they weren't no dark horse. Have you got any scoop? No. But he wants to know exactly who he's up against. And, and the guy in the blue shirt is an ex-Air uh, Union maintenance. I saw the two skinny guys with these guys. I got to go figure out who they are. But everybody's holding their cards pretty close so that nobody, had, nobody really identifies himself. Joe is going to have to outfox some big players to be the one who takes home the prize. Almost 4,000 kilometers northeast, Mikey and the Rangers have found their campsite. We're here. That's our place for four days. It's a nice spot. Here the neighbors are nice. In fact, most of the neighbors around here are hungry predators. They predetermined that we're going to set up camp on the lake. You know what, honestly, don't tell anybody, but I don't think I've camped outside in the wintertime. So this is my first time, so. But once we stop, we're in survival mode. They told me the first thing you got to do is shelter. So there's no, like, eating. There's no, uh, you know, starting a fire. It's shelter. They knew what they were doing. I, on the other hand, had no clue. But he's here to learn. <laughs> it's not very much snow right here. In minus 50, the cold, dry air is taking Mikey's breath away. <laughs> and even simple tasks are becoming a challenge. You got a better shovel? <laughs> The one thing that I really liked is how they tied the tents down. You can't drive a spike into the ice too efficiently. So the rangers have learned to improvise. Yeah, that's pretty neat. They're making little uh, handles in the ice. I would have never thought of that in a million years. That's very cool. He's got a big needle. <laughs> you couldn't get a stronger tie down. That's awesome. That's a wicked idea. Very cool. Turns out being on ice has a lot of advantages. We didn't bring any water. So when I first saw them digging, I thought they were digging to the water to pull up water. But no, they were digging just to get the ice. Oh, this is for my tea. I like ice better than snow. More taste than snow. All right. Whew. That's very simple, eh? And there's one more key to surviving the night here. Ah, fire, the giver of life. This is Ikuma. Ikuma. Different dialect, different meaning, but I call that Kublier, the big light. The big light? Yeah. Kublier. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so this is, this is, are this both section one here? Yeah. Section yeah. one, yeah. tent one? Tent one, tent two. Tent two, two. okay. Yeah. So I just, just in case I have to order a pizza, I got to go section one, tent two. <laughs> but tonight, they'll dine on some home cooking. There's a whole bunch of goodies in here, eh? Today's entree is um, salmon filet with Tuscany sauce. Oh, you can eat. Oh, you can eat. 
we had army rations, and everything in the ration is designed to either be, you know, in the desert like Afghanistan or be in the Arctic like Cambridge Bay. It's got to be that versatile. Hmm. Bon appetit. Tuscany salmon, here we go. Mm. Jeez, that's not so bad. Good now. Mm -hmm. Really good. It's really bon. Yeah, it looks like you're getting warmer already. <laughs> <laughs> we got our shelter, we got our heat, we got our food. I'm thinking it's bedtime, but no. Listen up! Everybody here? Yeah. We got a meeting and we're not done. Who's on Predator Patrol? From 1 a.m. to 2 a.m., Lloyd and Mikey. And I'm like, what do you mean, Predator Patrol? Uh, note, Lloyd has a rifle, Mikey has nothing. Oh, what about the muscles? <laughs> <laughs> so tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., everybody's back here. OK? Yeah. In just a few hours, Mikey will be standing guard between the ranger's camp and any hungry polar bears. And tell anybody I'm kind of scared of the dark, but we'll figure that one out when we get there. Holy smokes. Well, this is the 1 a.m. Predator Patrol, and I'm frozen stiff. Oh my god, that was nuts. Sleeping on a frozen lake is exactly what it sounds like. On Victoria Island, Mikey is barely awake, but he's heading out on predator patrol. Fortunately, he won't be alone. Lloyd kind of took me under his wing. His task was to, to keep me alive. And he'll have a little more help. Despite instructions, Mikey will be packing some heat. We got 303 infields there. Eh? Nice. And hopefully, we don't need to use them, but we're ready. Yeah. Let's give her. We just patrolled for an hour. Well, what kind of stuff would be out here? It could be uh, polar bear folk here. Yeah. We are just, you know, polar bear food. We're just in the middle of nowhere. We're in their land. And the smell of food from camp can easily draw in any nearby bears. I was a little bit scared. It's dark. I can't see nothing. These animals live out here. They could be two feet in front of me, I wouldn't see them. There's a lot of people depending on you. Oh my God. And tonight, the temperature's plummeting close to minus 60, a lot colder than what Mikey's used to. You have gloves underneath your hands. Well, my fingers are freezing solid right now. But a camp full of sleeping rangers is depending on them. I got a lawyer here, my trusty bear watcher. It's a new morning in Yellowknife. Yeah, hold them on. Okay, that's good. And Buffalo's mechanics are still suffering in the cold. When things can break around here, it's always after 40 below. But Chuck's working to get the Air Force back on the move. Okay, we better strap it down before I take it this way. And today, the Aurora crew is getting a special delivery. It was a pretty uh, happy sight to see the new engine showing up. It's like Christmas, right? Toys are here. For Chuck, getting the new engine inside is the first major step in getting the plane out. Just put it right about here, wherever you want. When we got that engine, I thought it was going to be, you know, no problem. Get everything put on and get out of here. Uh, I just want to make sure you have enough people to do the job. It's not uh, going to be unsafe. We don't need anybody. We got Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> and civilian Chuck wants to get this job moving at last. Now, when you guys put this engine on, do you bring it nice and close and then start hooking this up before you bolt it on? Or The civil world and the military world, they have uh, two different ways of uh, performing tasks. I don't know how you guys do it. I don't know once. Quite done it that way, yeah. Chuck is definitely in the city world. That's up to you guys. I'm just a peon. You, <laughs> you just put a couple in? Yeah, you got to get it lined up. 
I'm not gonna walk around like, well, yes, this is a military aircraft, it's ours. Like I say, this is his hometown, he, he knows best. Because once it's bolted, you'll never move it. If I do a job, I'll go do a job for you. That's what it's all about. Where I get soldiers standing there, lock and load, Chuck's going to work. But even Chuck's shortcuts won't solve every problem. Rangers, fall in! Buffalo Airways, fall out! <laughs> no. <laughs> Up in Nunavut, Mikey has made it through a rough night. Everyone was going, that was the best sleep of my life. And I'm looking around going, holy crap. It was pretty rough. I'm sore, I'm cold, this wasn't a vacation. And this morning, he's getting right back to work. There's going to be a new building demonstration. Mikey, do you show them how it's done, OK? <laughs> we need to find some trees. <laughs> if you're stranded out in the middle of nowhere, you're either going to die or you're going to survive. No, you do that on the other. Oh, look at this. This is a nice one. Yeah. Oh, shit. Like this. So he's oh. going to work from here around, and it's going to spiral up until it gets to the very top. It just went together like, like Lego. But it was a very master set of Lego. All right, so this goes up here. Oh, geez. It's all about cutting angles, making them fit. We should try it, Which one? That's easy, eh? <laughs> That's it? That's it. It won't, it won't go down. <laughs> <laughs> so then a little bit like this. I cut out a block and I put it in, and it looked good to me. It looked just like the rest of them. Okay, remember, Mikey, when you were doing this section? Yeah, all right. When they told you that you had your block two inwards? Now it's creating a problem here. I, I did that so others can learn. <laughs> <laughs> the worst part of building an igloo is when you get to the top, all the snow is coming down on you. Oh, this is so awesome. I can start and see the last blocks go together. Smart piece. Yeah. Here we go, last piece. Don't break that igloo. Last piece. Don't break the igloo. <laughs> the end. That's it? Uh, we, ha we have to uh, lock in the horses. Well, how do we get out? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Wow, that was awesome. There we go, that was very cool. Double high five. Uh, what I'm gonna take back is just an undying amount of respect for the Inuit people uh, and what they uh, do. The north that I experience every day is nothing like the north that they experience. And these guys enjoy it to a whole extreme and a whole new level, which is really an eye opener. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, thanks for, for helping me out and keeping me alive. <laughs> and uh, I wish you guys the best of luck in the next couple days. And uh, we'll have, we'll hopefully still, get the stove working. We'll still have a good time without you. Oh. <laughs> Mikey's had a taste of the real North, the one the Rangers know, but he won't be signing up anytime soon. Oh, kind of jealous of these guys getting to stay for a few more days, but it's kind of awesome that I get to sleep in a warm bed tonight, so kids go home. There you are. There's that smile again. Yeah. <laughs> It's the last day of the Sacramento airplane auction, and Joe's last day in the warm California sun. Yeah, the day turned nice today, boy. Can't, can't kick it a like this. 
and he's feeling good about his chances of nabbing a P3. Today our plan will be to go over to inventory once more and just have a good hard look at everything, see who the players are out there today and just see how the game folds up. But out at the airfield, there's some last minute competition. Who's here? I was surprised at the amount of betters the last day, the amount of interest the last day. It, it's a big crane operator, the guy with the... Oh, oh. Uh, Erickson Sky Crane? Yeah, Erickson's got the Sky crane. 747. There was a lot more people than, than we had anticipated. So, no, it's another company called DC-10 Tanker, I think. It's some, It's a, well, These guys have some big tankers. Yeah, they, they did. They, were, they got big bucks up there. Oh, jeez, you know it. When you look around the table and you see other players, uh, you know you got to tighten up and and you got to um, rethink your play. God damn. I'll just have to think this out here for a minute. Joe's facing down players a lot bigger than he expected. He'll have to up his offer. Yeah, here, I got a, something I want to give you to send this off to your lady at the bank. Joe submits his bid for one of the planes. My opening offer, my opening card, my throwing my early bid. You always have to change your cards. You have to reshuffle the deck there a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna call her right now. Yeah. And, uh, tell her, tell her, at, uh, e just email it to her now and tell her I'm standing by. It's, it's the old strategy, you know. If there's nobody there, the price is a lot cheaper. Right? Joe's had to dig deep to outdo the competition, but is his best offer going to be enough? In Yellowknife, <sighs> Mikey's back from Cambridge Bay, and there's a surprise in the hangar. The Air Force Aurora. This thing's been here since I've been gone. You know, when I left, this was getting out of the hangar. At that point, we were behind on our maintenance. Is, is my father back? No, he's not back till tomorrow. Oh, f he's gone, eh? Yeah. What about Rod? Oh, he's around somewhere. I did not expect to see no, that thing. Goodness. Supposed to be done one day. How's that looking? Good. Days behind schedule. The pressure's on Chuck to get the Aurora out. I'm gonna turn the wheels. This thing's f He is crusty, he is opinionated. But a split second later, he's focused, he's dead on, bang on, knows what he's talking about. Hold that up. Nothing jammed in there, just double check. 99% of the time he knows what I'm talking about. Our book says to torque it twice, once with the weight on, once with the weight yeah. off. No, the weight's on here. Yeah. yeah. So we torque these now. Joe gets back tomorrow, and Chuck wants the Aurora long gone before then. Just the chain, just to bring it down a bit. But the engine isn't lining up. Nope. Keep shaking it. OK, hang on now. Lower the nose. We're getting close. We're getting close. Yeah, it is. We'll have a look inside here. Should be no reason why that doesn't go on, man. There. That's how you do it in the operation, boys. Excuse me. It might not be formal military technique. How'd you do that? I'll show you. But it works. Yeah. We had some good tips, still within our maintenance procedures, but things that we hadn't quite thought of before or used. Piece of cake. Oh, you know, guys, props going on? Yeah. I'm surprised no one's put a buffalo sticker on it yet. How's Chucky being with you guys? Awesome. Knows his shit, eh? Yeah, he nice. does. Anything we've asked for. Right there. Now Chuck can tow the plane out for a run-up and hopefully send it on its way. OK, when we go out, there's going to be no slowing down, man. <laughs> Chucky came over and said, brother, <laughs> she's going. <laughs> It all comes down to the new engine. This is the new engine number three, so if any is going to be a problem, it's going to be that one. I don't know if it's going to function properly on the ground runs. I haven't tested these things. 
Okay, so you guys are okay for now? Do you need help with smoke kit? Chuck was there right from the beginning, actually. So he was very helpful. But even Chuck can't help them now. My big concern is that there aren't going to be any surprises. What's going on? The engine-driven compressor on number three is giving us problems. We're not getting any oil pressure indication on it. It's everyone's worst fear. The Aurora is still grounded. Offers are in. Our, uh, our markers are covered. In Sacramento, Buffalo Joe is trying to play with the big boys. Well, if I get one of the airplanes, I'd, uh, I'd feel that we've done very well. He bid all he could afford for one Orion firefighting plane. But more big money American bidders have just arrived. You're about as far south in the States as I am north into Canada, aren't you? Just about. The new players that came in, they'll be uh, doing what we did for the last couple of days. But you want to take them all in, eh? I do, yeah. I need them. You think you can use them? Yep, I do. Can you use them in the role that they're built yep, for? Absolutely. There's investment firms looking at putting them back to work. Uh, there's, there's people that have syndicated together to uh, put them back to work in the USA. I just want to know if, if you wanted all or... I just need one, eh? You only want one? <sighs> I'll give you that one in behind. Yeah, hi, Joe McBride here. So he makes a desperate call. Yeah. So you're going to sell me an airplane? Hoping to lock down a deal. So you're going to leave it open until they bid then, eh? There's no use me staying here. I might as well go home and go back to work then, eh? Joe knows he's already lost. They'll probably go to a group who, who may have bid on all of them. That's what'll put me out of the running. And he's heading north with nothing to show for his troubles. In Yellowknife. I hope it all goes good. After some more work in the hangar, Sergeant Clifford and crew are hoping they fix the compressor problem in the Aurora's engine. The run-up was good. Thank Christ. They flashed up, did their full run-up. Oh, all four engines running. There we go. The Aurora crew can now leave the hangar and the north behind. This plane wants to go flying. Don't get me wrong, Yellowknife is an awesome town. First time I've been here, and it's really neat seeing the north. But it'll be good to get back home. Back car, sir. I was out there watching. Take off is good. There you go. Well, well, good luck. Hopefully they don't come back, eh? Oh, no, they can come back. They just yeah, no, come, come back with a different airplane. Yeah, with a different, not that one. Mm -hmm. Maybe something new. We saluted them, and they were off. 